Okay, so in this video, I'm going to make my thumbnail storyboards for my um, robot theater idea from scratch. And what I just started by doing is opening a PDF template from the internet. I'll post a link to where I got that from down below. I'm just doing some kind of rudimentary stuff here. And of course, I have some uh, my script open next to my Photoshop. Um, so that I can reference back to it. I don't want to, I, I, you know, I know my story pretty well, but I want to be able to reference back to my story script uh, that I wrote. Now here, um, I just recorded this. I'm recording the audio afterwards. Um, I'm actually, I'm starting making, by making these a little bit more detailed than they need to be, but, um, you know, I included shading and stuff in the first video. There what I did was I just uh, marquee selected the first box and duplicated that so that I could have the same thing in the second box. You want to try to keep all of your thumbnails or just all of your storyboard um, pages separated into separate layers as much as possible. Um, it just makes everything a lot easier. Now, later on in the video, um, I kind of got, you know, tired of being so meticulous and ended up just uh, making everything a single layer for each frame. But or sorry, for each page. Um, but essentially, you know, the, the thumbnailing is pretty hard, uh, not because of the drawing, but because turning your idea for the animation into something visual from just something written is actually pretty hard. Even if you have a pretty clear idea of what your story is going to look like or what your animation is going to look like, it's still not very easy to just magically translate that into visuals and of course the other challenge is that you know sometimes it can be a little frustrating to draw so quickly and yet and then sacrifice quality so it kind of feels like you're making crappy drawings because well you are um <laughs> even if you're a really good th uh, storyboard artist or just story artist in general you know it's going to be pretty difficult to uh control yourself and not try to make everything look really nice there what I just did was on the on the right there was I grouped everything for page one and put and then started a new group so that I could make page two and separate those and then I just duplicated a layer to reuse for page two and you know again these drawings um, I tried to go as fast as possible it still took me about an hour um, but I had some interruptions, <laughs> but also just, you know, it took a while. Um, and there were a few things that I changed from my script, uh, between the script and the thumbnails. And just, you can just, uh, oh, accidentally use the rotate tool there. I hate that thing. It's right, the R key is right next to E. So when I'm always trying to hit eraser, I accidentally hit R and then rotate my whole canvas. And you can't undo that for some reason. You have to manually change the rotation back to, uh, zero. Um, I forget what I was just saying. All right, uh, you want to you want to try to uh, save as much time as possible here by doing things like um, if you can duplicate a layer or by hitting uh, Control J on the layer, then you could duplicate a layer. If you want to, um, you can Alt or Option click on a layer and drag it to automatically make a new copy of it that you can just drag around. A lot of what, another thing I'm doing in my thumbnails a lot is kind of just adding these little like comic strip highlights, like little marks coming off of important things. And that may mean that, you know, I either want to just focus on that, but I don't have, feel like drawing the lighting or whatever, or maybe I'd even zoom into it if this was animated, but I'm not going to draw that in my thumbnails because I just want to get it done and then kind of appraise what I created um, before I start animating. So some of these shots also, actually probably most of these shots, you know, not the exact framing that I'll end up using in the animation, not the exact, um, you know, poses definitely that I'll be using. You want to try to get your poses and your shots, um, you know, you don't want to just draw everything straight from the front or whatever, but um, you also just need to get get something cranked out. I had forgotten to save this whole time, so there I go saving it. 
And you can already kind of tell I've uh, already on page three I've um sort of gotten too carried away and forgot to separate my panels into different layers. So that's kind of a bad thing. Um, luckily, what I could do is just, you know, marquee select each one of these panels and then hit control shift J to cut and make a new layer. Uh, control J is just to make and copy a new layer. Control shift J is to cut and make a new layer. So I can still break these into separate layers later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the other thing, you know, it can this can be pretty frustrating because sometimes you you wrote something in your story or whatever, and you either don't know exactly how to picture it on screen after all once you get to this part and you are then are you know doubting yourself about whether that was even a thing that's going to be in your animation like right there he's supposed to be getting covered in flour but i don't know how <laughs> i don't know how to draw that without like going into more detail with like shading and stuff to to indicate that he's uh has flour on him um, and I'm also not really doing a lot of backgrounds or anything, you know, it's kind of implied just from the angle. Um, like right here, we're looking down at the countertop because just the angle we're seeing is hand and the fact that there's a carton of eggs kind of, you know, there's nothing else that it could be except a countertop. And, you know, I'm doing a lot of these close up faces. Um, I don't know if that would, you know, if I'd necessarily be that close up on his face, um, I might be, but, um, this is stuff that can change once you get to 3D, so I'm not married to any of the framing that I'm drawing here. But the point is that if I was trying to go directly to 3D without doing this first, then it's going to be just as frustrating, if not more frustrating, than drawing it out first. So now he chopped an egg in half with a laser trying to get some eye expressions in there he's happy now because he finally realized that uh cooking maybe isn't so hard after all because he can use murder weapons in order to cook with he's dumping some eggs in i couldn't really figure out how to draw this part he has like he's supposed to have like a saw blade come out of his wrist but i'm not sure if i you know the way that I have it coming out now is even going to make sense in 3D. So I might change that, but he whips up. And I probably want a downshot. I didn't draw a downshot, but I might want a downshot of, like, inside the bowl. Maybe I don't want that shot after all because maybe that'd be too hard to show all that stuff. Trying to trying to at least make the hands and stuff look <laughs> like they have a pose even if they're very rudimentary and a lot of these things are easier written than drawn it's a lot easier to write that he does a whole bunch of little montage -y things than it is to actually draw all that stuff out like right here, I'm trying to draw him icing a cake <laughs> in in one panel. Not really uh, the easiest thing to get across. And then he has this like sword that comes up, and I'm gonna do like a kind of stylized like might just make that whole thing like a silhouette or something during when he swings the sword. The other thing um, that kind of goes without saying, but I guess I'll point it out, is I didn't really change my brush at all for this. I just used the default um, Photoshop brush, didn't change any of the colors, didn't change any of the, the opacity, because it was a little bit at the beginning when I was attempting to do sh shading and then promptly gave up. So for my actual storyboards, I would probably want to, uh, you know, do that a little bit more in depth. I am using a tablet, of course. I would not be able to, you know, my, my drawings would look even worse um, if I was using a mouse almost at the end here. I kind of changed this part from the script a little bit. So in my script, he 
like leaves and then forgets to get rid of the body. Um, and I didn't feel like drawing that. I wasn't feeling that ending. So I changed the ending to he just, he doesn't forget the body. He takes the body as soon as the lights go off and shoves him down the garbage disposal. And then what happens is he, you know, he kind of dusts his hands off. Job well done. But then he realizes, wait a second, I want that cake that I made. So he then goes back and uh, takes the cake away. Anyway, so um, that'd be the end of my thumbnails. Uh, after this, I could have somebody else look at them. Or I could just look at them myself and decide what is the best option for uh, just moving forward into the animation, whether my idea is working. And I would also export out each one of those pages as a separate image and then create a PDF, which I'm not going to go over in this video, um, but that would be one last step because you don't want to force people to open a Photoshop file and go through layers and whatnot. You've you need to save things out as a format that people can look at easily. Anyway, um, I'm not going to claim that I am a expert storyboard artist or thumbnail uh, artist, but that was my uh, sped up version of creating thumbnails for a little animation. Hopefully that was helpful, and that's it for this video. See you later.